Fallon? Yes. Would you rather be able to eat pancakes as much as you want that without one. it damaging your... <laughs> <laughs> Roll the open. <laughs> Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Jason show I'm Jace let us uh, let us start with this uh, <laughs> actually I'm going to start with something else and then we'll start with that first of all I'm, I'm backstage and Aaron Schwab Marini uh, Aaron Schwab is our uh, audience coordinator she's also the bet Midler of the Twin Cities and she believes in customer service when people come here you know the the audience experience is paramount to Aaron so imagine Imagine my delight when I'm backstage and I hear the following interaction between Aaron and our audience. Here's Aaron. Hello, welcome to the Jason Show. Uh, while you're here, you're going to be on camera, and if you don't like that, there's the lobby. The lobby's that way. Anyway. <laughs> No, let's start with this. Kevin Bacon, I sent this to executive producer Jeff. Audience, look at this, look at the television. Kevin shared this at the end of the actor strike. He shared this on social media, recreating his dance moves from Footloose to celebrate the end of the actor strike. Literally, that is a step-by-step -step recreation because I've seen that movie about a hundred times. Look at him. He moves still like Ren McCormick. It is so great. We are with you, Kevin. We're excited too, and we're excited about today's show. So before the audience is sent to the lobby, we better begin. Start it, Leo. Here we go. I'm yeah. jealous of Kevin Bacon's thigh gap. What? I'm jealous of Kevin Bacon's thigh gap. Oh, yeah. Well, he's so, yeah, he's, he's itty bitty. Yeah, he's just very fit. I feel like it would look very different if I was doing it. <laughs> very different. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, you right. have, you, we don't have much of a thigh gap. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you and I, we, you know, it's, that's, not our, that's not our role in no, life. It no, it is not. No, it is that, is, that yeah. is not the role we play in life. No, it's no. self-deprecating humor. Thank you. That's very right. Much. Yes, yeah. With just an ounce of self-esteem. Yeah. You know, just a little bit. <laughs> just just a little devil, do you? <laughs> how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I, we're excited. Are we excited it's Friday, audience? Yeah. yeah. Or if you're watching us from Orlando, it's Monday. They get us a day late. They get us, they get us a day late in Orlando. Hey, listen. Speaking of Orlando, before we go any farther, um, you know, over the summer we are very excited. The Jason Show expanded to my uh, sweet home, Chicago, and it meant a lot. I said it. I'm not going to repeat myself. It meant a lot uh, that we did well in Chicago, uh, and, and it and it just it means everything to me and we've done very well in Chicago but for the first time in our audience we have people from Chicago that's right yeah. and they're sitting now and this is how special we treat people from Chicago we put them on the side right there there they are yeah yeah no those are actually 
they are actually sitting in our very special Oprah Winfrey chairs, which, hey, it's fitting. Harpo Studios was in Chicago, uh, but those are two actual chairs that we stole from Harpo uh, <laughs> as it was being demolished. Yeah, no, we got those at auction, so there are... <laughs> No, we, we got those at auction. Andy Cohen has a couple at Watch What Happens oh, Live. that's awesome. Uh, I got one at auction, and somebody, uh, my friend Jasmine, gave me the other. So we're thrilled that you're oh. here. We're thrilled that you're here. There we go. <laughs> that's a great shot. Yeah, we we couldn't sit them couch. on the comfortable couch. We sat them, yeah. That's, again, if you don't like it, there's the lobby. There we go, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's get started. Time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Let's do this. Very excited. I love Chicago. Okay, uh, let's get started. It's finally down to the final two on The Golden Bachelor. If you haven't watched it yet, here's your warning. Spoiler alert. There we go. Now, in case you don't remember last week, uh, Gary walked out of the rose ceremony with two of the final three waiting to hear his decision. Well, last night, the Golden Bachelor says he was feeling the pressure of sending someone home despite still having a connection. Well, in the end, again, spoiler alert, Teresa got the rose and Faith went bye-bye despite despite saying that they were in love with each other. So that leaves Teresa and Minneapolis's own Leslie FEMA yeah. as the final two. As the final two. During the Women Tell All special last night, we got a look at the final episodes and another very tough decision for Gary. Look. <laughs> People want to know what happens in these fantasy suites. Oh, my oh. God. I really love the idea of pillow talk. But, yeah, people my age still knock boots. When's the last time you had sex? <laughs> he told me he loves me, but I don't know what he said to her. I think you're the one. If he were to get down on one knee, would you say yes? Yes, I'm there. Absolutely. Yes, I'm all in. She says that she is there. I want to be engaged. But the possibility is there that I could make the wrong choice. Don't make the wrong choice, Gary. So following the Fantasy Suites episode next week, girl, that's a whole episode, the Fantasy Suites, uh, the finale of the show will air November 30th. Now, full disclosure, mm -hmm. I do know... Leslie FEMA's family. I do know David. David, Chef David FEMA is his, uh, her ex husband, was here on the show. He's a good friend of mine. I know her son, Eli. Yeah. So, what do you know? <laughs> Give us the juice. What do you know? I, uh, Eli <laughs> has not told me anything. Okay, and I, all right, yeah. And I, met, I go to his restaurant a lot, and I, I thank you, audience. <laughs> I go to his restaurant a lot, but he has kept his mouth shut. So has David. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows anything. But I do have, I have a prediction. Okay. Okay? If Gary doesn't <laughs> choose Leslie, if he doesn't choose Leslie, which I think he should, I think ABC will make Leslie the next Bachelorette. I think if she is not picked, because I look at, I don't read yeah. the comments about us, <laughs> but I do <laughs> read comments. She is very popular. Yeah, Bachelor absolutely. Nation loves Leslie, so ABC would be foolish yeah. to not make her the Golden Bachelorette. Absolutely, and we know that they're going to do a Golden Bachelorette. This was yes. like too successful. Yep. They absolutely will. Yeah. yeah. And if she's not chosen, mm -hmm. it should be it should be Leslie. Agreed. And you and I fell off a little bit, admittedly, but I think you and I are going to come back for the fantasy suite. Oh, I am watching. <laughs> Can I come over? Yeah. Okay, yeah, exactly. I'm coming over. Yeah. yeah. Jake, get. Bye, Jake. Bye, yeah. Colin. Yeah, see ya. Olive can stay. Olive okay. can stay. She'll be in bed. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, we're good, yeah. Next up, the return of Mean Girls, the first trailer for the musical version of Mean Girls is out with um, a new take on the classic. Let's look at this. What? What's this? We're gonna make her pay. All we've done is make Regina hotter and revive the wet look. Dance break. Who wrote all this junk? Katie pushed her. Regina really should be lifting through her glutes. 
with this thing. I can't Sexy. even see it. Like a face breast. <laughs> well, this time around, Renee Rapp stars as Regina George this time around. She played the same role on Broadway. Mean Girls is going to hit theaters uh, January 12th. And that you had the same observation that I had, and that is that first trailer that came out, mm -hmm. it was like they were keeping it a secret that this is a musical. Yes, and they no songs are featured in that, if you notice. But also the thing that triggered millennials like myself is the tagline is, not your mother's Mean Girls. And millennials were like, oh, we are not old enough to have teenage daughters. <laughs> How dare you slap yeah. us in the face? Because so, yeah. you're a true millennial, I am aren't a you? I'm an elder millennial, thank you. Um, yeah. I am a, I'm, Are I'm, you elder? I'm an elder millennial, yes. Really? Yeah. Thank you for saying that, though. That means you think I'm youthful. Yeah. I do think you're youthful. Yeah. I would not have called you an elder millennial. Mm. Yeah. Well, we don't have to say it ever again. I, I won't say like, it ever I again, can, no. I, yeah. Um, but I just saw the girl who plays Regina George, Renee Rapp. She was just in the Twin Cities. I just went and saw her concert. She is phenomenal. I really? can't wait to see them sing. Yeah, so. And I'm glad a lot of the old cast members, like Tina Fey, Tim are Meadows, back. Tim Meadows are back. John yeah. Hamm, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm an elder Gen Xer. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are, Elder. Thank you, I was yeah, waiting. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello. Hello, okay. <laughs> I complimented you. The yeah. nice thing would be to compliment me back, but I okay. Thought, I thought you were a millennial like me. Yeah, I thought yeah. you were my friend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, audience. <laughs> No, but I didn't even realize I was an elder Gen Xer. Mm -hmm. I'm at the butt end of it. I'm at oh. the butt end of the Gen Xing. Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes. 74. What? We're the same age. We're the middle? Okay. Yeah. Oh, now, now, you, now, okay. Now I feel old. Now I feel older. We got to go. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Okay, a lot happened in that commercial break. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I need to make a correction. I misspoke. I, I didn't mean that I'm an I'm a I'm not an elder Gen Xer. I'm a baby Gen Xer. Yeah, we had to clear that up. We had to clear yeah. that up because Gen X goes from 1965 to 1980, and I'm 74. So I'm at the tail end mm -hmm. of my our moon rises in millennial. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We like how that's how we like to say that. Okay. So. And we also found out in our audience is an entire dental office. No. <laughs> right there. So. So. So if you have a teeth cleaning appointment, <laughs> they are not there. They're they're here. It's a back and five sign. It's a back and five. <laughs> People are just yeah. waiting. Yeah. I yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't email us if you have an appointment there. Uh, it's not our fault. Let's move on. Move over, King Kong. Someone else is climbing the Empire State Building. <laughs> Yesterday, that's the best intro yeah, ever. Yeah, you... Jeff, that's some good writing right there. You get yeah. a raise, Jeff. Right there. Yesterday, <laughs> actor and singer Jared Leto became the first person to legally climb the Empire State Building. This is not a joke. Look at him. He went from floor 86 all the way to 104. And if you're doing the math, that's nearly 1,300 feet in the air. The 20 minute stunt was part of a promotion for his band's new world tour. No, girl, let me tell you. Okay. I love the Jason show. I love the radio show. I ain't climbing nothing for this crap. I ain't climbing nothing. Uh -uh. No. Would you climb something like that for your radio show? No. No. One, one time I did one of those charity events where you climb all the stairs of a very tall building, and then I puked at the top. <laughs> <laughs> Literally puked immediately. Never again. No, nope, I'm good, yeah. Well, last night, Leto joined uh, Fallon on The Tonight Show to talk about it, and that, my friends, is our Late Night Rewind.
Ever since I was a kid, I was fascinated with the Empire State Building. Uh, it, to me, was a symbol of New York City, and New York City was a symbol of a place that you go to make your dreams come true. It was just a dream of mine. I loved the climb, um, and it just seemed like one of those impossible things, and, and it, it was very impossible when we started. We got a 10,000 no's uh, before we got a single maybe, uh, and even then, uh, we just really got the final word a couple of days ago. And then I put my fa my hands on either side of the window sills, which are quite sharp. You can see my hands are uh, pretty beat up uh, oh from gosh. the climb. Yeah, it's not meant for climbing. Yeah, no, no, no. it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not meant for climbing. No. Well, I don't like him. <laughs> Because he has 0% body fat. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, it's jealousy. I love him. Yeah. I just, I don't like him. I asked you before the show, do you agree that he's a vampire? Yes. <laughs> because he doesn't age. No. He's like, looks the same as when he was a child. He is and a vampire. And isn't he like 50 now? Yeah. He looks the exact same as when he was like 18. Yes. So I do believe he is a vampire. We've witnessed our first vampire. Yeah. And no one needs to clap for that. That's no. the dumbest thing I'll say today. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. Still time. Yeah. Next in the dish, it's your chance. I love this. It is your chance to own a piece of true late night television history. So here's the deal. David Letterman, I love you, Dave, is selling the giant blue and yellow sign that hung outside the marquee. The old marquee of the Ed Sullivan Theater during Dave's uh, years at the Late Show on CBS. Dave and Paul Schaefer talked about it on Letterman's YouTube channel. Look at this. Because we're giving away a significant piece from the old show and the Ed Sullivan Theater. Yeah. It's part of the marquee, and it's big, 8 feet by 20 feet, and it says, Late Show with David Letterman. I have no idea why anybody would want this. But we'll get it to your home, we put it in your yard, and the neighbors will call the police. I'm being told now that you get to come and meet Dave. Announce Dave for anybody. Is that Dave anybody that we know? That's all I, that's all I was told. Okay. You that, get to come and meet Dave. That's good enough for me. Give <laughs> <laughs> I, I still, I still love these two together. I could watch them all day. Proceeds. So this is real. It's a raffle, and the proceeds are going to go to Habitat for, for Humanity, uh, organization that Dave loves. You can enter yourself to win by donating $10 to the charity uh, through GiveawayDave.com. I've already submitted. You did? Oh, yeah. I'm I not like, joking. Yeah. I like that they're doing a raffle instead of, like, just to the highest bidder. Yes. So that, you know, someone like me could, you know, possibly actually win it, even though I would never be able to outbid the highest bidder. No. Yeah. It's if nice. you win, can I buy it from you? Maybe. How much? How much? Remember, we're friends. <laughs> yeah. Friends don't pay my mortgage. <laughs> You're right. I'll, I'll make you a good offer. Okay. Yeah. All right. Next, Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks are ba uh, headed back to World War II. What do I mean? Well, the two of them are executive producers on a new miniseries. Getting a lot of pub. I saw this on social a lot last night called Masters of the Air. We got our first look yesterday. Let's take a look at this. We came from every corner of the country with a common purpose. Go, 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 go! To bring the war to Hitler's doorstep. We need daylight missions. The suicide. How much the need? We lead our boys through. Good. That is, uh, if you're going, he looks familiar. Well, he does. That's Oscar nominee Austin Butler. He stars in the show. It's a nine-parter, so it's a limited series. It's going to hit Apple TV Plus in January. We are saying in the watching of this, I'm just glad that he's gotten the Elvis uh, <laughs> accent out of his... Of an, yeah. I know. He has finally stopped talking like Elvis. It, the time finally came. Yeah, he was very committed. Oh. Method acting gone a little too far. I had done... <laughs> I We did an interview with him uh, months after he shot the movie, and he still did the interview yeah. 
as Elvis, and he acknowledged it. He goes, "I can't get rid of it." Yeah. It was like a, it was like a vocal. I'm not joking. It was like a vocal tick that he had that he just couldn't get out of that register. Mm. And I mean, interesting. I also had a friend that did like a study abroad in Ireland and came back with an accent. I'm like, no one's buying that. No. That in like four months you're Irish now. Yeah. No, no. It's like when Madonna did that in the, in the 90s when she went to <laughs> she went to Britain. She came back and I'm like, who are you? Like, who are you? <laughs> okay. You, you Camilla now? What's going on? <laughs> Up next, some unhappy people in Hollywood this week, and it has nothing to do with the recently ended strikes. This story calls for. Oh no, she did. That's right. <laughs> It's our legendary drama horn. Here we go. Here's the dealio. <laughs> Warner Brothers just decided to cancel the release of a movie, even though that movie is all done, girl. All done. The movie? It's about a cartoon character, Wiley E. Coyote. That's right. Aww. Wow, audience, you took that real hard. <laughs> Didn't think the audience was going to take this that hard. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's called Coyote vs. Acme, and it's a mix of live action and animation, kind of like Roger Rabbit and uh, uh, Mary Poppins. Uh, but this is no Mary Poppins. Uh, this one is starring John Cena. Uh, the studio spent $30 million making the movie, but decided it's so bad that it's not worth releasing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So apparently, Jeez. the movie, they talked to their... <laughs> they talked to their WB accountants and realized it's worth more as a tax write-off. Warner oh. Brothers did the same thing. You may remember this. This is a common thing with the WB. They did the same thing with Batgirl. That was a $90 million tax write-off. Oh, yeah. my gosh. I don't remember Batgirl. Who was, do you know, remember who You don't remember be? it because they no, killed I mean, it. But I, don't remember, <laughs> I know. But I don't even remember them making yeah. it. Who was supposed to be Batgirl? I don't remember what I don't her remember name is. Either. She's, a, she's a young actress. Oh. That people that saw it, some people said it, it could have been good, but they shelved it and oh. went to went to H and R Block and was like, get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. Warner Brothers at H and R Block. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you do mine? Boom. <laughs> yeah. Next up, the late uh, late night host all addressed the end of their uh, actor strike, as you can imagine. Here's what Fallon and Kimmel had to say. As I was saying, the strike is finally over. That's right. When the actors heard a deal had been reached, they gasped, screamed, laughed, cried, and then were like, I also do accents. <laughs> Seriously, the actors are back just in time. I'm not sure the world could handle another reality dating show. Am I right? <laughs> The Hallmark Channel immediately started shooting all 1,200 of its Christmas movies this morning. <laughs> One member of the Actors Negotiating Committee said that there were tears of exhilaration and joy in the room after the deal was approved, and it only took them a few takes. It was very realistic. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them said they can't wait for actors to return to their shows and be able to promote their TV show or movie. Yeah, Late Night had to resort to, like, cooking segments and, uh -huh. and stuff just to be able to fill their absolutely, shows. Absolutely, absolutely. But I am excited. I do. I asked yesterday, I'm like, I wonder if they'll try to cram out a bunch of movies and TV shows like oh. much faster than normal because how long were they on strike? Four or five months? Yeah. So we're gonna, there's going to be like a lull at some point for us. It'll be a very anemic back half of this TV mm -hmm. season. Yeah. Very thin, thin. Time to meet our next, uh, and our last rather, JVIP of the week. Today it's Jenna from Belle Plaine, Minnesota. Hi, Jenna. She says our show keeps her smiling and makes her mornings better. Thank you. We appreciate you, Jenna. She gets a Jason Show mug, also entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture, and a $250 gift card, gift certificate, rather, to Renew Med Spa. That's right. Wow, I, you guys are really easy today. I love it. We have a cooking segment and more when we return. Not in the shot today, that's right. It's a, it's a, it's a, with less than two weeks to go until Thanksgiving, you're probably planning your cooking strategy, but uh, you can't skip dessert, you can't. So how about a new twist on a pumpkin pie? Here with that twist is the Emmy-winning host of Taste Buds on Fox Local, your friend and mine, Stephanie Hansen, everybody. Hi, buddy. 
Can you smell the warm, cinnamony, yeah. bread crummy, ginger snappy we weren't, smells? We weren't, Fallon and I weren't <laughs> sure if this was dirt. Uh, we weren't sure what you sprinkled on top of this. You always do such a beautiful spread, we just weren't sure. But no, this is very cinnamony. It's smell a vision for you to yeah. get you into the Love the, the close-up of the cinnamon. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Thank you, control room. That's lovely. Um, okay. But, I teased this yesterday, yeah. and Aaron uh, laughed at me uh, because I, when when you say the term crustless pumpkin pie, <laughs> it's just weird. So what what are we? What actually are we making? We are making pumpkin pie pudding, but you could also call it crustless pumpkin pie. So there's a lot of people that have anxiety about making pie crust. Yeah. And so this gives you all the pumpkin pie without the crust. Or you could just <laughs> you could just visit your good friend Sarah Lee. You know what well, I mean? Yeah. You could. You could, but okay. No, I'm excited about this. And it's let's look at the positive: lower carbs. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yes, okay. Jason. So, way to be positive. Thanks. I'm trying. Okay. What, so what we are doing is I just mixed up a couple of eggs. I saw with, that. Uh, three quarters cups of sugar. Okay. And we are going to add all kind of warm, pumpkin-y, spice seasonings. So we've got ginger, okay. teaspoon. We've got like a half a teaspoon of cloves, a uh, half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie seasoning, and a teaspoon of cinnamon. And don't worry, if you're trying to quickly write down, we'll post this whole thing. Yeah, don't yeah, worry yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. I have so many Thanksgiving recipes on my website. I have the Instant Pot Gravy, Instant Pot Mashed Potatoes. I have all the sides. I have how to make the perfect pie crust if you feel like you want to wade into it. What did you just dump okay, in there? Okay, this is the weirdest ingredient in the world. I don't even know what it is. Are you going to say eggnog? No, but it's evaporated milk. <gasps> and That's not, not weird. It, it is a little weird. I don't know why we're buying shelf-stable milk, but it works really well in this delicious dish. Okay. So, so evaporated, evaporated milk. milk. I, don't, I don't think that's odd at all. I see evaporated in a lot of cook or baking things. And not sweetened condensed milk, by the way. Yeah. Evaporated milk. Okay. A little bit of vanilla, and I'm going to talk more about why my vanilla looks like this in a minute. When we it does kind of <laughs> look disgusting. It just looks yeah. a little weird. And I say that with Ringo Starr, peace and love. 100%. It, it, yeah. it, look, no. it looks like something that ha, that you found in your yes. basement from like the late to early 90s. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And if you get up close, like the bottle's kind of sticky and weird. Yeah. It looks a little bit like a chemistry experiment. Way to sell it, Steph. <laughs> Way to sell it. Okay. Very important, you guys. Pumpkin filling. Not pumpkin pie. Pumpkin filling, just straight pumpkin. Yum, everybody loves pumpkin. I mean, don't you say you don't love pumpkin. No, I know, I do, oh, my love. Oh, no, I'm just, that. I just want to leave out the maybe 4% of the audience that doesn't like it. Well, you they know? can't come to my party then. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You can come to my house. That's I'm fine. kind of obsessed yeah. with pumpkin. Yeah, you can come to my house. And then we have a little salt. A little salt. Yep. Okay. So all you do. That's a lot of salt, but go ahead. Yeah. It was a teaspoon. That was a teaspoon? Okay. Yeah. It what? looked <laughs> it, like like the rear view mirror, the object looked bigger than it appeared. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I have a lot of problems with that sometimes. I know. It's all right. You, okay. You've had a lot of problems this week. I have. <laughs> Poor, everybody, can we just all give Steph some love? Just a little clap. She's been. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm not quite exaggerating, but you see, you see the items here on the uh, the demo table. She forgot half of them today. <laughs> um, so yeah, we had to. Yeah, she's having a week. We I love am. you. I keep forgetting everything because I'm over scheduled. You're doing great. I know. Okay. So see how this looks like what would go in your pie? Oop, there we go. There we go. Yeah. That's what it is. But you're gonna put it in little ramekins, or oh. or let's say you don't have little ramekins and you have like a souffle dish. Or, or, what if you have like an eight by eight uh, brownie pan? You could do that too. That's the beauty of this recipe. And if you're cooking for 30, you just keep multiplying the recipe and using whatever vessels you want. And you're going to end up getting this very delicious little pudding when you cook it at 350. Okay, 350. Yes. Now, depending on the size of your vessel, you're going to need to adjust your cooking time. <laughs> Objects in mirror are larger than they appear, and he can't stop laughing. I think this says a lot more about you 
than me this time. I'm just saying. I'm perfectly okay with my vessel. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Where, uh, what should, can I eat the thing? Well, not yet. No. Oh, oh. Well, what the hell you want me to do? Okay. We gotta, I mean, what is... Here's, we're gonna, because we need to, what do you have with pumpkin pie? Whipped cream. Of course. Oh, we're not done. No. <laughs> so let's just pretend that we baked this, right? Yeah. And they came out and they looked through the magic of television like this. Yeah. Okay. Then what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. Is we are going to. Take a commercial break. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what we're going to do. We'll be right back. <laughs> We are back with our buddy Stephanie Hansen. She's showing us an alternative uh, to pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving. She made her little crustless uh, pumpkin pie things here. Uh, and now what are you doing with that okay. nasty vanilla again? I have okay. learned a lot about whipped cream in the last week because I took a baking class. Oh. And I learned so many things. So the first thing, normally when I would whip cream, it would be on high and I would just whip it until it was almost butter, right? Because you're in a hurry and you want it to be done. But the goal of whipped cream is to create like little air bubbles versus big air bubbles. Those little air bubbles give your whipped cream more structure. So you actually do it on medium, not on high. So tip number one. Okay. Tip number two. This is for homemade whipped cream. Yes. Yeah. Cold bowl, cold whipped cream. Even you can make your whipper cold, okay? <laughs> Tip number three when your whipper's cold. It might, it might end your Saturday night prematurely, but yeah. <laughs> Most. <laughs> this is really going to be my favorite segment. <laughs> Okay, most of the time when you're whipping cream, maybe you're doing it for a party or maybe you're taking it like to a friend's house. Yeah. So you want it to be... <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> you want the whipped cream to be stable. <laughs> Just like us. <laughs> sugar to your situation. Oh, there is. I ordered something. I, I'm trying I'm to bring sure it back. Did. I'm trying to. I ordered something from, I think, Sweden. It was an actual product. No, 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 no. It was a whip. When I made my uh, coconut cake, I ordered an, it was a stabilizer. It was you a You don't need that. Okay, this okay. This is why I'm okay. telling you. Okay. All you need is powdered sugar. Okay, that okay. helps stabilize it. It helps stabilize it. So we're still whipping. I might have to speed it up here depending on our time frame. Okay. We okay, have two we got minutes. two minutes. We're still going to leave it on medium. Okay. Let us talk about vanilla. You guys, vanilla is so expensive in the store right now, you can't believe it. Also, vanilla beans are expensive. But here's what you do. Anytime you use a vanilla bean in a recipe, or you can just buy some, you just fill it with vodka. Now, I did not drink this before this segment, I assure you. I think I did. <laughs> Every time you have a bean, or you use a bean, or you scrape out a bean for a recipe, you just put your pod inside your little vessel, and you keep refilling it with vodka. Why vodka? Because it's a neutral spirit and it carries the flavor of the vanilla. This vanilla I have been refilling for like literally four years. It never goes bad and you don't have to spend all this money at vanilla in the store. Because if you're like a serious baker, you know, my friend you... Zoe bakes. She uses a lot of vanilla. We need to get her on. We've never had her on. Oh, this. she's I... so great. I know. That's, I don't think she yeah. likes us. No, I don't know. she does. Oh, okay, she's great. No. Okay, now we're at one minute, so we're just going to... Do everything you're not supposed to do and just move it along. Okay. Okay, so we've got our baked. I love homemade pudding. whipped cream. I oh, think me too. there is nothing, it really is so easy. There is no substitute. No no offense to Mrs. Cool Whip, but it is real. Cool Whip is not whipped cream, I, it's non dairy topping. I know, but you know what so I mean. So then what is it? I, I don't know. If it's non dairy, it comes from camels. I don't I mean, know. I don't, I know. I don't, I don't it's know. It's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so we're still whipping the cream. 
Basically, what you're going to do, you can pipe it into a little bag if you want it to look fancy. Okay. Or you can just dollop. We're just going to dollop because we've got just a second or two left. Hi there, little whipped cream. Okay, you want... <laughs> You want soft peaks. Is it soft peaks? That means not when you flip it on the whisker thing, it, it, it should hold its peak a little bit. Yeah. Yes. And here's the other trick. Okay. You we finish it off the beater because you can control it better. Okay. Go so ahead. See soft peaks. Yeah, soft peaks like that. Yep. Okay, okay. can you put some on so I can quickly eat yes. this? Yes, but wait, do not do it yet. You want the ginger snap crumbs. Okay. That makes it a little texture. There we go. Okay. Okay. Give it up for Stephanie Hansen, everybody. That's real good, I Mama. Knew That's you right. Like it. The recipe for the pumpkin pudding and whipped cream is available on our website, stephaniesdish.com. Stephaniesdish.com. And don't forget to stream the latest episode of my buddy's show, Taste Buds. It's available on the Fox Local app, on your smart TV, or through the Fire Stick, Apple TV, Android TV, or Roku, or MySpace. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for being here. Well, earlier this week, we showed you the newest Sexiest Man Alive from People Magazine. This year, it's Patrick Dempsey. The issue hit newsstands actually today, and the Sexiest Man Alive, they are the inspiration for today's game time. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. Oh, boy. Nope. There we go. There's the cover, and now it's time for game time, everybody. There we go. It's Friday, we'll get along, we'll get around to it. Okay, today's game is called Sexy or Not. Here's what we're gonna do, that's right. We're gonna pick out an audience member who's thrilled to be here, mm -hmm. uh, and we're gonna give them a name, and they have to guess if that person was ever a sexiest man alive. If they get it right, they win a prize. If they get it wrong, they play the dreaded game Be Bo Bean Boozled, where, yeah. Which means that they could potentially eat a jelly bean that tastes like dirty dishwater. That's right. So we decided to show the audience how it's done by playing with Fallon. So okay. here we go. All right. Should I talk into this even though I have this? You have yeah. that too, yeah. yeah. Okay. You ready, Fallon? I'm ready. Will Smith, yes or no? No. You are right, but you're still going to eat a bean. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hold on, no, we tell you which one. Uh, pick out a yellow, uh, um, excuse me. <laughs> okay, I don't know that I want whatever one. You eat that yellow and white one right there, which is either a rotten egg or buttery popcorn. Oh. Go ahead, Fallon. Rotten egg. Oh. Rotten egg. Oh, a little mini bottles of water. There we go. Oh, oh my God. That almost oh, just gosh. took your nose right off. There we go. Thank is that, you. Is that awful? It's not great. Okay, there we go. It's not great. Let's uh, get our first contestant. You, right here. Come on up. Oh, wait, I'm Stand right by Fallon. There we go. There we go. This gross. Okay, uh, what's your name? Brianna. Hi, Brianna. Hi. You're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> okay, Brianna, are you ready to play? I'm ready. Hot or not? Okay. Harry Hamlin, was he ever a sexiest man alive? Mm, yes. Oh, you're right. Oh, yes. So right there. There we go. Go ahead and have a seat. Right. Have a seat. Oh, send yeah, send her away. Okay, let's get a dude. How about you? <laughs> uh, okay, about that one. Um, now, audience, uh, TV audience at home, what you didn't see was, for some reason, this poor guy is being real picked on by who everybody is. Why do they want to torture you so bad? I don't know. I don't know. What, what's your name? Uh, Matt. Hi, Matt. Matt is from the Rogers Dental Center, <laughs> which is, I mean, the, the irony is not lost on us that we potentially may make him eat a sugary uh, jelly bean. <laughs> you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Bradley Cooper, sexiest man alive or not? Yes. 
You're right. Yeah. Have a seat. Yeah. Have a seat. Actually, no. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to need you to uh, blue. Blue is either toothpaste or berry blue. Oh, those both sound good. Berry blue. Oh, God, and he got a good bean boozle. Why am I talking about Get out! Oh. This is not going well. Am I the only one that's going to eat a nasty egg? Come here. You're coming over here. Stand right by Fallon. Okay. What's your name? Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi. You're so, I love you. You're okay. <laughs> okay. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes or no? Yes. No. Oh. He probably refused it. He probably did. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Um, please get one of the brown, brown and white ones. That is either stink bug or toasted marshmallow. I can spit it in my hand if it is. You can. You can yeah. still, yeah. I also have gum. Go. It's all right. Okay. Stink bug or toasted marshmallow? Oh, my God. Ah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Ah. So Was it so horrible? Yep. Yep. Okay, have a seat. Yep. Here we go. You're sick. That's all you wanted. <laughs> you are sick. <laughs> Welcome to the Jason Show. <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a moment, everybody. A great week of shows is coming your way next week. Here's a look at what to expect on Monday. On Monday, it's another fast food field trip. This time, Fallon joins us in the car as we, well, try fast food. On Tuesday, <laughs> Fallon is showing us all of her favorite hobbies, one of her favorite hobbies, painting. She is a really good painter. She's gonna give us a lesson. You are. Hi. Stephanie Hansen returns on Wednesday, and she promises not to drink before that appearance. <laughs> Uh, I know, no. right? And by the way, look at that picture of Stephanie used. That's from 1987. <laughs> then winter plant care tips, and on Friday, cool family-friendly spots to visit now. Be sure to sign up to be in our studio audience. Head to eventbrite.com and search The Jason Show, or uh, scan that QR code right now. We're going to take a break. We'll wrap things up after this. Back in a moment. It's time for the surprise. <laughs> time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. We don't know what's in this segment until I read it for the first time right now. Today, a ding-dong ditch prank with an unexpected culprit. Look at this. Police in Georgia released this ring doorbell footage showing a deer hitting the home's doorbell with its nose. After hearing the chimes, it got scared and took off. It actually... Uh, <laughs> Oh my God. Oh my God. It actually happened at the home of a sheriff's deputy. <laughs> right now is just, here's a fun fact, right now is mating season oh for God. deer. So they think this buck was looking for a mate. Oh. So it's rang a doorbell? <laughs> well, deers don't have tender. <laughs> <laughs> still looking. They can't swipe left with no. their antler. No. no. Uh, all, all kidding aside, we always have really good audience. Well, every day, but on Fridays, it's always a party. Thanks to this audience, man. Sincerely. Our shows are always better with a great audience. And again, you can be in ours by going to eventbrite.com and searching for The Jason Show. Uh, coming up next week, Stephanie Hansen, like we said, is back. Fallon's going to show you how to paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She will. That's coming up uh, next week. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.